So are you saying that you don't think, you don't think you can divorce the subject of a play from its audience? No, how could you? That's yes. pretty obvious, isn't it? <laughs> No, I couldn't. I couldn't. Like, I, I'm but you know what I mean. The, yeah, the, I'm, the farm I'm, show I'm is interested so and fascinated by the audience for a show. Now, the interesting point is that you never know what the audience for the show is. You know, we tried to be as specific as possible for the farm show. We went as you know right into naming names and playing something that should have only been of interest for you know six square miles of people. But you're implying but that, that what somehow goes, that one hooked out, and you know we yeah. we played it across the country. But would, is, is sort of kind of is one of your core beliefs that what happens on stage should be intimately connected, subject-wise and other, to its audience? That the farm show plays better, not in New York, not in Manhattan, but actually in Clinton. Oh yeah, oh no, yeah, of that course. The prospector it does. show well, plays better. I don't better. know about better. I mean, it, you don't. It, it plays alive there, and I'm not plays sure. Alive. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need like I, I, my curiosity about whether it plays alive in Melbourne is is what? I why do you want to do that? No, got you. No, but why? I could I could never. I, but I why suddenly could you, you understood know, like, what no, it would be drives you. Like, I suddenly got it. I suddenly yeah. got it. it, it All it, these it, years, Paul, <laughs> I just haven't got it, and now I get uh -huh. it. But the audience, it's good. Yeah, I, like I get it. drunk on audiences. I love audiences. I go, sometimes I go to plays just to drink up the audience rather than the play. Right. You know. And uh, and what's really and I say audiences because what's gr well what's interesting about Canada is that there isn't one audience there is a series of audiences and that series of audiences it actually is even getting more and more interestingly defined yeah but there's lovely crossovers and people love to go into experiences where you know you're not you're not the majority if I can understand this correctly yeah the power of the farm show was as you say it's attached lifeblood to its audience yeah. and what it spoke to. Uh -huh. yeah. And the power of the drawer boy is different because the drawer boy suddenly plays in Indianapolis, then it plays in Houston. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. the, and it's so far divorced from its blood audience mm -hmm. that there's something, an artificialness or a professionalism, or it's crossed over into the other kind of thing. Well, actually, it's moved into metaphor. I mean, there's a lot of metaphor in the, in the farm show experience. He takes that, he takes certain themes of that. He takes the theme of idealistic arts groups going in. In fact, what he's doing in a really exciting way, and I'd love to have a long discussion with Michael about this, but what, what I think he's doing is that he is, you know, I think it's probably a better version of the limits and the power of uh, art connected with life than our country's good, you know, which is this play about uh, uh, convicts going to Australia who are, you know, encouraged to be in a play or forced to be in a play, um, and that's for their betterment. And, and in a way, they would come out better people mm -hmm. because uh, because they, you know, touched on themes of art or something like that, or they transformed themselves. I'm not, I don't remember too many transformative moments in there. Right, right, right. right. Uh, now, in this one. There's a really interesting thing about it. It's beautiful, and in fact, it's you know it's got potential blood on the floor here, which is that in 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 Michael's story, that art looks like it can destroy lives. It can destroy the only contact that these two, the only connection point that these two old buggers have, and the only story that they have to get through their lives. Right. Yeah. But the you know the the catch in that is that one guy has to remain in his mentally uh, handicapped way forever and ever and ever, and then you can tell me this story. I think what's great about uh, Michael's play is the way the parallel, and maybe this is why other parts of the world like this, is it's about collective memory. And in a modern society, we are basically all like the David Fox character. We have a bruise in our head, and we can only live in the present. So we can't remember, and in you know in, in this theater project that you're doing, you know it it's quite true that basically you have to do this because people are forgetting that this happened at this point, that there was excitement in Toronto for say Duke of Boris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there was a play at Pass Moran, that wonderful space over there 
called Charles Manson, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, which just took the roof off uh, the theater and the city because it was edgy, dangerous, scary, and yet a recognizable art form. Mm. Yeah. Directed by John Palmer in a wonderful way at that time, just extraordinary. And I guess what was happening at that point, and you were talking about what was the connecting situation in here, a series of really exciting talents could at least find uh, some ghost hint of the realization they'd like to dream about on an open stage in a you know, scrambly theater in some part of the city. <laughs>